Hello and welcome to my computer. My name is Ben, or Chewy Gumball as some people might also know me. My goal today is to hopefully show you some tools and some techniques that you've never used before in the hopes that you'll become a better modeler. The first thing I'm going to show you is a concept that I've done. It's not very pretty, but it helps me get some shapes and some ideas down. So if I come back to my project later, I haven't forgotten about them. And just in case I've lost some trains of thought, I can get back to them by looking at this concept. It's not the best piece of work you'll ever see, but that's not the point of it. So with that, I'll go straight into Max, because I know that's what you want to see. Just wait for it to load here. I'm assuming that you've used Max before and you know how to move around some things. Specifically how to move and scale and how to create a basic cube or plane. Other than that, I'll try not to assume you know anything. And if you see something that I haven't quite explained to your liking, feel free to ask me on the forums. And yes, I am using 3ds Studio Max 9, so if you're using an extremely out-of-date version, some of these tools might not be there. And in that case, you should upgrade. So, the first thing I do is create a plane and I'm just setting it so that it's only a box. If you press F4, it turns on uh, bordered edges so that you can see where the edges are. And if you see if I do that, this is how it was when I created it, and I don't really want all those, because that's just a waste of polygons. So I'll do that and turn it into one square. The next thing I'll do is turn it into an editable poly. Don't ever use editable mesh because it just sucks. As you see, there's not very many tools here. And I don't know why you'd use editable mesh because editable poly is just better. Lots more tools there. The first thing I do, some people don't like this, but I do this because I like to see where all the polygons are. So I turn off smoothing groups. If I make some more polygons here oops there or you can see there's more polygons here here I'll just turn off this grid I just press G smoothing groups allow you to pretend there's more polygons there than there actually is so as you can see, it looks like it's rounded much more than it should be. And if I turn off smoothing groups, it turns back to how it would normally look if they weren't there. I find this helps to reduce wasted polygons. I'll just delete this and start again. I think my concept here, which isn't really in the middle of the page, but I'm going to start with this bridge here. I'm going to try and make this swirly thing and this jutting out part here last. I'm going to start with a small thing because I find that works better. I get more inspiration as I work, so I'd rather start on something small than something big and want to change it later. So this is the scale tool, in case you didn't know. The move, rotate, and scale. And I'm going to start with the walkway part of the bridge. I think I'm going to have stairs on the sides of it. So first thing I'll do is I'll use the connect tool to start with the stairs over on these edges. This tool is very useful. It allows you to connect edges as so. I don't normally use it for more than two or three, but sometimes it's useful. And you 
can change the pinch here to change where they go on them. The slide also slides them back and forth just in case you didn't want them symmetrical. I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do it again because I want three steps. The next tool I'm going to use is the extrude tool. It's a basic tool. You'll probably use this one a lot. It just moves all the selected polygons up and creates a border around them as so. I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to deselect those. Those are my first steps. Oops. So another handy tool is if you've already extruded it and you want to extrude it the same height again, you can just select this box here and it's saved your last one here and it'll do it again. If you select apply. Another thing over here, this is useful if you have rounded surfaces or not flat surfaces like this is. Local normal means that it'll average all the normals of all the polygons and extrude it along that. By polygon means that it'll extrude all the polygons along their normals separately so you won't get one flat surface at the end, you'll get broken up ones. I'll show you that just now in case you didn't know what it does. If we select these and extrude by polygon, you can see that there are cracks in between the polygon paces there and that's normally not what you want but just in case it is you know how to do that and I'm going to go back by pressing control Z and take off the smoothing groups again and I'm going to extrude this last step Now it seems a pretty short bridge to me, so I'm going to stretch it out a bit and widen it a little bit. Maybe a little shorter. There. Now and the nice thing about games these days is that they can use a lot more polygons than they used to, but that doesn't mean you should waste polygons, so I'm going to get rid of some of these extra vertexes and I can see right now if I target oh I didn't show you target weld well target weld right here in the edit vertices part is very useful because it allows you to bring vertexes and basically move one to where another one is and then weld them which you will probably find useful but be careful about it because if you aren't then a face may turn into a G degenerate face, which means that it only has two vertexes, which you think, how can that happen? But it does sometimes, and that's not always good. So I'm going to show you here. That one didn't turn into a degenerate face because there's only one polygon selected. But if it had, and I'd done that, you would see two polygons had been selected and the way to delete that is to press control click on the face you can see and then when you're left with only faces that you can't see you just press delete and they go away that's an error that Halo's tool will give you if you aren't careful and I don't think it affects compiling, but it sometimes creates odd lighting errors, and that's not good. Now I'm going to show you the Create Polygon tool. You go this way, or counterclockwise I guess that is, and you just click on the vertexes you want to have the polygon go between. And it creates it for you. You double click the last vertex to close the polygon. 
And as you can see, we have deleted all the unnecessary vertexes there. Now this looks like a good start to a bridge, but I think there's something I want to add that just hangs down because there's going to be a walkway underneath here as you can see down to here so I kinda want to add something interesting there rather than just have a plain bridge a nice tool that I have found is when you select some things and you hold shift and you either move them or scale them specifically with vertexes here you can clone them and then you just have floating vertexes here like that as you can see one there and one there and now this top face here isn't very good for because there's extra vertexes there and I'm just going to clone some more out with using shift and moving I'm going to delete this too because it's not very useful there and I'm going to create a polygon between them so that I can use the extrude tool now I'm going to target weld some of these to make an interesting shape rather than just a box I think I'm going to lower this edge just a little bit. And we can get rid of that. This edge I think can come to low. Hmm. Well, I guess we can get rid of this. That's because I extruded this here, and there's still polygons inside. Not very good. So we're going to just weld those together here, and move it down. Then we're going to extrude some more. So we'll get rid of those. And then we can extrude this down. Extrude again. And then I think I'm going to have a little smiley face kind of thing here hmm. oh I know here we'll just do this and then I didn't like the shape before I didn't like how it Oh, here we have some more of these polygons inside. And I'll just go inside and delete them. I didn't like the shape of it before. I didn't like how that angle between them was so sharp. This, I think, will fix it.
only thing I don't like about the scale tool is that it affects everything. So if I just wanted to keep the proportions of this here.